So there's two theories to doing this remotely or any kind of way. Okay. Um, so the way I approach it is uh, I'm not here to convince people. Okay. I'm here to help people. All right. So there's a different mind shift. You really have to talk to people like you're there to help them. And my analogy to that is imagine if your best friend is calling you and asks you to come and help him move and you, and you, you know, dress, you go to his house and you get there and you're ready to help him move. And then your buddy says, oh, I got to think about it to see if you help me move. Right. It's just okay. crazy. And so the way you got to think about it is you're here to help them and they're looking to get some kind of coverage. Anything okay. outside of that for them to feel like they need to buy something is crazy because you're there to help them. You're not there to convince them. That's theory one. It's a mind shift. Okay. The other, the other way most people do it is, and I've done this before and it works, is to actually sell this over the phone. It takes a lot of skill. It takes a lot of effort. And not many people have that skill. But what you what most people do have, what is uh, what you can replicate is the fact that you can do hard work and helping people in hard work does work. But you need the only downfall is you need a little bit more leads. OK, because you got to go through the numbers. I like playing numbers. I don't like selling. It's a lot of hard work. It's it's just exhausting that I have to convince somebody to take care of their family. OK. Mm -hmm. But it's possible. You can do that. If you're good at it, you can do it. If you're not good at it, then just use hard work and effort and go through the numbers. So, for example, when I call you, I would say, uh, so let's let's do some role playing, right? So this is me doing mortgage protection. So ring, ring. Yes, hello. Hey, Mr. Ma Akeem, can you hear me? Akeem, yes, yeah, speaking. Hey, good. Hey, my name is Elvis. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm calling you regarding your mortgage lender, Bank of America, right? And it um, uh, looks like uh, sometime after your closing, you and your spouse received a bunch of those mortgage protection letters in the mail. You know, if something happens, the mortgage would be paid off and all that jazz. Remember that? Okay. Remember that? Yes. You've seen those? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they look like spam and stuff, right? Anyways, but... Um, so I was just following up to see if that's something you guys were still interested in going over. Uh, no, not at this time. You're not? Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. I just hang up. I move on. Okay. Okay. I, that's the thing. I don't play games, right? And now if you tell me, right, so let's say he says, no, I'm not at this time. Okay. I can try all my effort to try to overcome those objections. But what I can do is, guess what? I'll buy 10 more leads and I'll find that one guy that says he is interested, right? The conversation is totally different. So for example, okay, so let's say you say, yeah, we're interested, right? So go ahead, say that. Okay, yeah. yes, we are interested, yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm the gentleman, the underwriter that goes over the options, what you qualify for, what the cost is, you know, help you get enrolled and all that stuff, right? Uh, usually takes about 20, 25 minutes for me to figure out all that stuff. Uh, are you guys available to do that now or should I call you back later on? Uh, maybe this evening. This evening? Are you sure? Yes. Is, you got to talk to your wife first because, man, I'm telling you, if I schedule something and my wife doesn't, and I did tell my wife, I'm going to get in trouble. Yes, I, I want to converse with her first. Correct. Okay. All right. So you think about five, five thirty would about, work for you? About about five thirty. And you're central or eastern? Eastern. Eastern. Okay. And just to confirm, we're going to be going through mortgage protection in case something happens to protect your family, right? Um, and we'll go over all that. Won't take long. I'll help you guys out. All right. And I got you down for five thirty. If you can write that down, I will text you as well and let you know. Okay. So you got that appointment. You see what I'm saying? You got a confirmation that he's interested. And that's all we're looking for. If you buy 300 leads and you got five people that say they're interested, the conversation is totally different, right? And so when I run the appointment, it, it, the appointments don't take long. It's like, okay, so what do you know about mortgage protection, right? If we're running the appointment, that's all I say. What do you know about mortgage protection? Well, I don't know anything. 
Well, I imagine you know something, otherwise we wouldn't be talking, right? You know it covers you if you die or or get sick, right? Is that what you know about it? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I know. Okay. Well, there's really not much to it, right? You die or get sick, the mortgage will be paid off. And most people get these policies praying they never have to use them. Okay. They pay off the home before they have to use them. Otherwise, if you got to use them, it's not really going to be good for you. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of, I mean, if you think about it from a basic foundation understanding of what we do and what the policies are, they help families when things happen, right? They call it the sleep well at night policies, but nobody prays they want to use it because these policies, if you use them, you're either disabled, you're either dead, you kind of got cancer, you got a stroke, heart attack, like nobody that has ever put in a claim. I've had a lot of claims put in has said, you know, every time I talk to them, they would, they wish they had the loved one back. They would give all the money back for that loved one to be back. You know what I'm saying? So that mind shift of understanding what your job actually is, that's, that's where like the epiphany happens, right? Because in, in my opinion, and I've been doing this a long time, like, I can't put in somebody's heart what God hasn't put in them, right? Like if he's not there to take care of his family, if God hasn't put that in his heart, like I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? If God himself can't do it, I can't do it. So when you're talking to people, think of it as I'm here to help you and I'm here to provide you the options and to see if you qualify and make sure it's in your budget, right? And that policy will stick. But if you start selling, and if you start using, you know, you're not really direct with people and you start seeing, well, let's see if you qualify or, um, well, we got to send it in to see what the price is. People start canceling policies, and especially when you do this remotely, you don't have credibility as good to do this remotely as you do in home. Okay. In home is a lot easier. Over the phone is a lot harder, but you need more leads, right? And so the hard part is finding out why they want to protect their family and then asking questions like, hey, Akeem, what's, what's going to happen if you become disabled tomorrow? What's that look like for your family, right? Asking those questions and, and understanding where the pain point is. And so when you find out what that pain point is and you summarize it at the end, so what you're telling me is X, Y, Z. And what you're telling me is you got no life insurance. And if something happens tomorrow, you guys are going to be homeless. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. So when you put it like that, you don't get any objections. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And that takes practice, takes time, Ooh. takes effort, takes repetition, right? It takes a lot of appointments, but it's a different mindset when you're calling somebody, you should be calling them. Like, hey, I'm here to help you, right? I had a guy call me the other day. I mean, I had a guy call the other day. He's like, so what are you selling? I'm like, I ain't selling you nothing, man. I'm like, I'm here to help you if you want this. But if you don't, we can have a nice, you know, you can have a nice day, right? And um, and and so, and I'm I'm always puzzled when so when 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 I'm on the phone with somebody and people still tell me, I got to think about it. And I'm like, hold on, stop. Let, let, hold on, I'm confused, right? You're telling me. If you die, if you got disabled tomorrow, your wife would be homeless, right? And then I would ask the wife, I'm like, Jen, how would you feel if I got he got disabled tomorrow? How would you feel about that, right? Well, you can't get the policy at that point, right? Well, I'm not going to be good about it. So you've got to think about if you want to take care of your family. Is that <laughs> what I'm hearing? I will call out people. It's easier to call out people when you're there to help them than you trying to convince them. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. So it it is it is the the point of helping people, not convincing them to buy something. And Sean always says that we're here to help people. We're not here to convince people, right? And the only way you can do that is if you're comfortable with buying more leads. All you're really trying to do is find that person that's interested, right? Or some agent didn't do a good job, you know, and and they can't they can't really tell you. Like if somebody says, no, I'm not interested, there's nothing you can say. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But if they say they're interested, okay, 
you got a client, you got a client, you actually have a potential client and wants to buy some and the conversation is totally different. Uh, as far as what we're doing, um, you know, obviously there's different types of leads and, you know, we kind of learned over the last, I don't know, eight months that at least on the phones, there's just different ways to call people. Right. So, um, mortgage, which is the main reason why I switched to telesales is because I enjoy a mortgage client, just my thing. Um, for a lot of reasons, I like the products that we offer them and, and different things like that. But, you know, for me, where I'm at here in the Carolinas, it's all locked out. Uh, there's not really much availability. So therefore for me, you know, to be able to do mortgage, I had to learn how to do it over the phone. So <laughs> the crazy thing is, is once learning it, um, you know, the pros and cons, the, the way you work all that out, it's, it's pretty much the same thing uh, on both sides of it. So for a new agent that's coming in, you know, most people are going to start on like final expense leads or life leads, like, you know, the one month internet, uh, Facebook final expense, those types of leads. Um, <clears throat> they're best for closing because they're already home, right? They're, they're, you book an appointment like if you have to, because those people are already home, they're already, you know, sitting on their couch, it's, they don't work, right? They're just sitting there waiting, basically. Um, you know, so when we're calling them up, <clears throat> unless they're at work or they say they're at work, you know, we're trying to close a mortgage is a little bit different route. I tell them I can't do it right now. Then I'm booking my appointment. So somebody like me, the way my schedule would work is I would get up in the morning and each and every morning and I would dial and I try to book six to eight appointments in the afternoons, right? I don't like to book next day. And then from there I'm doing one call closes is like my door knocks in, in between my no shows you know, the rest of the rest of my day. Yeah. So like, for instance, that, this is how I do all my one month internet leads. I, I call year old internet leads. I don't really care. Um, right. But all my, um, all my, all my one call closes. So I kind of, uh, I don't ask, right. It's a little bit different philosophy. So like I'm calling, it's like, Hey, Dave, Hey Dave, Hey, real quick. This is Mike Curry. I was calling you back. I'm a manager here at the benefit center. And uh, the girls just laid your information on my desk. Looks like you were looking for the, you know, final expense life insurance quotes. And I just needed to get you those quotes. Can you grab a pen for me real quick? Takes like 10 minutes. So I'm not asking, right? Like I'm telling them what to do, like from the very beginning, either they're going to go get the pen or they're going to say, what was this for again? Yeah, this was the uh, life insurance final expense quotes. I uh, got your date of birth here, 125.90. I just need to go through that and real quick and run through it. If you can grab a pen for me. Most of the time they grab a pen. Right. And then when they grab the pen, like, got it. Okay. Just so you know, you know, we work with all the major companies. So for me to get you the, you know, identical numbers that fit you, it's got to run through just a brief health question. Have you ever had any heart attack? Like I get into the financial inventory right there. So I kind of run it backwards. Have you ever had any heart attack, strokes, cancer, you know, go through that. And then I'm building the value and then I'll build into income. Cause I have to build a little bit of credibility, right? Like I keep, it's like a cliffhanger. I keep them waiting for that quote. And then I just ask them one more question. Okay, real quick, let me, uh, are you a smoker? No, all right. Um, you know, oh, and you know, when you initially filled this out, you know, most people fill it out for one of three things. Either they, you know, want to take care of final expenses, they want to leave a legacy or protect the mortgage. Which one was it for you? I don't ask them, I tell them. And then give them the options to choose from, right? And then they pick one. Oh, my, you know, a little bit of everything actually, or, you know, just final expenses. Perfect, okay, gotcha. Did you know if you wanted to be buried or cremated? You know, and then just like let them, the questions drive where I go. Um, that's how I've been doing like the one month, uh, year old, I guess I could say internet leads because those are the, e and half the time they'll either remember or they're like, I don't remember filling that out. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's been a bit, I'm just really far behind. Like I said, I'm the manager. I have to do all the clean, you know, make a joke of it, right? But if it, at the very beginning, if you're just like very assumptive, you, you tell them who you are, where you're calling from, why you're calling, and what to do, most people will just do what you tell them to do. I mean, you guys know that just from being in this business and any part of it, right? They just, people just need direction. And it's like, if you tell them to grab a, like why you're calling, who you are, why you're calling, where you're calling from, like the, you're literally eliminating all the questions that people ask, right? Who are you again? Where are you calling from? You know, what are you calling about? Like all these little things you can eliminate. So I'm just very direct at the very beginning. Um, and if they hang up, I call the next one. I don't, I don't play around and call them back. So they mark me as spam and all that stuff. Like I just call the next one.